Hey guys, welcome back. We're back with the 2022 ETF overview uh, series. Today we're looking at ticker symbol FVD. That's the value line. It's the first trust value line dividend index ETF. Uh, we're going to go over a basic overview of it. Okay. We're going to look at uh, expense ratio, uh, holding sector allocations, what the index is, dividend growth and performance of this ETF. Um, we'll compare it to some similar ETF that I think might fit. Uh, I don't even know what that is yet. We'll get to it when we get there. Um, so let's dig in. If you missed the uh, uh, past videos, down below is a link to the playlist. You can check them all out. Uh, for now, we're going down a list of assets under management, and we started with the largest, and we're now down to the seventh largest, I believe we're at, and that is this one, ticker symbol FVD. So what is the value line dividend index? Let's check it out. So it is uh, going to seek investment results that correspond generally to the price and yield before fees and expenses of the value line dividend index. Now the value line dividend index is something um, that's a little, un it's somewhat unique and proprietary. Okay. Let's take a look at it. So they give a, a safety rating of stocks, right? And they need to have a safety rating of number one or number two, and we'll go over that down below. So if they uh, score a number one or number two, they select those companies with a higher than average dividend yield as compared to the indicated dividend yield of the S&P's composite stock price index. So it needs to yield a little bit more than the S&P, essentially, um, over average. Now, it's an equal weighted index. Um, you'll see later on that the dividend is not that great, to be totally honest with you. Um, value line eliminates those companies with an equity market cap of less than one billion uh, equally weighted, like I just said. And uh, you'll see here the value line safety rank measures the total risk of a stock relative to approximately 17 other other 1700 other stocks in the value line universe. It takes into account a stock's price stability rank and the financial strength, strength rating of a company. Safety ranks are given on a scale from one, the safest, to five, the riskiest. And rank number one, these stocks as a group are the most stable and least risky investments relative to the value line universe. Rank number two, above average, these stocks as a group are less risky than most. And on down the line. Now, um, let's take a look at what these companies are, what the sectors are, and all that stuff. So, um, I do not like, remember last week, I, or last video, I love the uh, Spider Global ETF or the State Street uh, website. Um, First Trust, their website, seems like it's from the 90s. So, we're not going to use the First Trust website. Um, so, here we are. As of the recording, trading for $42.91, uh, $12.95 billion of net assets as of December 31st, only running a 2% yield on this with a pretty high expense ratio of 0 0.70. FactSet gives it a B, Morningstar gives it four stars. Uh, the price to earnings ratio on this one, um, 19.39. Now it says a mid, didn't it say mid value? Yeah, mid value equity ETF. So there's a lot of mid caps in here and uh, price to earnings is a little high for a value fund in my opinion. Now let's take a look at the portfolio comp. So we'll click on over to there and we'll look down here below. We've got 200 holdings in this, all pretty much equally rated. So they're gonna have about a half a percent uh, allocation to each company. So as you see, top 10% for almost 5% and the others 95%. Uh, the top 10, Excelion, that's a utility. And a lot of these we probably won't know. Uh, AGR is Avon Grid. That sounds like a utility as well. Um, Target, that's an interesting uh, pick. Northwestern, Otter Tail, MGE Energy, Axis Capital, Avista Corp. I believe that's a utility. Uh, CH Robinson Worldwide and Ida Corp. So a lot of unknown names. So a lot of mid cap um, names that you probably, uh, you know, not popular, I guess you can call it. Uh, regional exposure, North America, 91%, 6.7% in Europe, a little less than 2% in Asia, half a percent in the Middle East. 
84% uh, of that is in the U.S., 67 in Canada, and on down the line. Uh, market cap, 50% of the fund is in large cap, 34% of the fund is in mid cap, and 16% is in small cap. And Morningstar rates this as a mid cap value fund. Now let's go down the sector exposure. We have utilities, 19.45%, 19, 19 industrials at 167 financials at 147 uh, consumer staples at 11, healthcare at 10, infotech at 10, materials at 5.3, real estate at 4.3, consumer discretionary 4.3, uh, communication services at 2.8, and energy at 0.48. So uh, we knew they were equal weighted, so there's really only one holding in energy. So if energy is a thing that you want and you're in this fund, you might want to uh, look to get uh, some more energy exposure. So now let's take a look at the dividend. Now this is where this thing doesn't score too well, in my opinion. Dividend yield, forward dividend yield, 1.76%. Dividend growth rate, TTM, that's trailing 12 months. So the last 12 months, it had a uh, negative 6.9% dividend growth uh, over three years, only 1.24%. Dividend growth rate, 5.74% over five years, and 10 years, 6.1%. Consecutive years of dividend payments of 14 years. Uh, obviously, no years of dividend growth because we're down trailing 12 months. So not a, a very good performance. Uh, to say the least. Now let's take a look at the actual performance. Now the interesting thing here is that uh, it has performed fairly well uh, total returns wise with dividends reinvested in one of the biggest uh, uh, dividend ETFs that is VYM. Uh, if you missed that one that's in the playlist. So we're going to compare it to VYM. We're going to go back at 10 years and we'll chart 10,000 invested. Let that populate, and we'll see here. FVD gave you an average annual total return with dividends reinvested of 12.87%, whereas VYM gave you a 13.07. So, um, even though FVD, with a you know, I wouldn't call it abysmal, but a definitely below average dividend growth rate, a higher expense ratio, um, really kept up with the big dog in VYM of Vanguard. So very interesting that that happened. I actually wouldn't have expected that. Um, but, you know, obviously if it were uh, my money, I would definitely choose VYM over FVD uh, because VYM, uh, if I recall correctly, has better dividend growth rate um, and, and their, their, their index is just a bit stronger than FVDs. They have, uh, VYM is probably a little bit more in large cap stocks. So that's FVD, the first trust value dividend fund. Uh, if you enjoyed this, um, you know, I know a lot of, I'm getting a lot of flack on some of these that, um, you know, well, that's on, that's not good. This ain't good. This is why I'm doing these overviews guys. So that, you know, everything I put out is not, I'm not putting them out saying, Oh, these are great ETFs. These are overviews, informational videos. Um, if you enjoyed, let me know and uh, you guys have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye. I am not a financial advisor. The information contained in this video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Thank you.